welcome to Fresh Perspectives. My name is Gail, and my guests today, uh, is, there's one person who <laughs> <laughs> you've seen on here just about every year. Her name is Patty Benton, and uh, she has her friend Phoebe with her, and they are here today, of course, to represent the Northern Chautauqua Canine Rescue. And um, anyways, I, I just thought I'd mention to you, Patty, uh, uh, back at the beginning of the winter, we had uh, people from the uh, Little Angels Animal Rescue oh, okay. on. And they bought, brought six cats with them wow. that day. So <laughs> we, we had a lot of fun with those little rascals. Were they <laughs> running all over? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Patty is here with Phoebe, and, and we're going to talk about the canine rescue. Um, OK, let's start out with talking about upcoming your upcoming fundraisers for the year. OK. Um, the big one, of course, is the, uh, the yard sale. Mm -hmm. And so this year we're going to, well, last year, I, I don't remember when I was on the show before if I talked about it, but we did build a pavilion. It's huge over uh, one of the big, you know, dog yards. Mm -hmm. And it's right behind the, our learning center building. So mm -hmm. we used to just have the learning center building for the yard sale, but now we've expanded and so it's much easier to put the stuff out. It's not as crowded and we were able to use the pavilion. We got it built last spring. And so we had, a, of course, a successful yard sale last year. Uh, one of the things we're gonna add to the yard sale this year is um, Foodies Sweet Eats and Sweets is a food truck local. Oh. They've been around, I think they've been to the Mayville Park. They've eats, been and, eats and Sweets. Foodies Eats Foodies and Sweets, eats and I think and it's sweets. called, yeah. Okay. I remember last year, um, m my husband Carl wanted to go with me to the yard sale, and <laughs> <laughs> because he'd heard that there was going to be food we could buy to eat, ah. we, he goes, we could have lunch there, mm -hmm. and then... <laughs> And we got over there only to find out that it uh, you hadn't been able to pull it off, I remember. Yeah, well, the year before we did a chicken barbecue, um, but as a vegan, I don't like to, you know, sell animal products right, to save right. animals. So, but I realized, you know, in, in my perfect world, everyone would see it that way. But everyone right. doesn't. Unfortunately. But the yeah. lady at Foodies, uh, I explained that to her, and she is willing to do, she's going to do like, we haven't really talked about the menu yet, but there are going to be vegan, vegetarian options oh, okay. available. So okay. if she does tacos, there'll be like, you know, beans or some other kind of, you know, vegetable right. tacos that right. people could get. Um, and, uh, and she's also going to do some sort of little fundraiser, whether it's like a, a dessert that the proceeds will go towards the rescue. We've got to nail that down, but she will definitely be there. She's committed to us that weekend. It's the last Friday and Saturday. She'll be there Friday and Saturday. Last year we expanded to also Sunday morning when things are really, whatever's left is, you know, fill a box for a few dollars and mm -hmm. you can walk out with a lot of treasures. However, mm -hmm. if you get there on the first day, everything still is really a bargain. And yes, and there's it's still, a lot most of, of it is still there on yeah, the first it, day. Yeah. First day, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, we have people lining up. We open at 9. We have people lining up at 8 o'clock. So I think the foodies lady, I told her that. So if she wants to get there early and do, like, some breakfast items, she could do that. Mm -hmm. So um, we will have food there this year, and we have porta potties so everybody should be comfortable. We'll probably try to set up some tables and maybe a little tent outside. So people can so people sit, could to, sit, sit and, and eat, eat yeah. there. And yeah. we, have a, you know, we have a couple benches, but we can, we're gonna try to set up some other weather. Hopefully the weather's gonna oh, okay. cooperate, but yeah. you know, we might even be able to have room in our pavilion for a little bit of, um, mm -hmm. a little dining area, so. It seems we'll like every that. time I've been to your yard sale, the weather was sunny. Don't it, jinx us. <laughs> Well, um, I, I like to think from the positive side, yeah, you yeah. know, that, that if you think positive, 
okay. it'll turn out okay. I, I hope you're right. So, Just, yeah. um, but it is undercover. I mean, we have the yeah, pavilion and we have yeah. the building, so rain or shine, it will you, happen. Right, right. Well, you know, speaking of the food truck, um, my husband and I went to a veg fest in Erie, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. oh, maybe half a dozen, six or seven years ago or something like that. And you know, they had a really big veg fest. And um, it was at the Shriners place over mm -hmm. in Erie. And there was a food truck there that was, had come from Michigan and the truck runs on vegetable oil. Wow. Not gasoline. Yeah, wow, that's cool. Somebody's relaxed. Yes. No stage fright there. <laughs> this is Phoebe. So you see, look how yeah. good she would be. She can play, mm -hmm. she will chew on, you know, hard toys, soft toys. She will chew mm -hmm. them, but she'll destroy them. Mm -hmm. Now, is there anything, uh, there's, I guess I meant to say, ask that first, and I went on to something else. But um, is there anything in particular things about Phoebe that you would like the viewing audience to know? Uh, yeah, okay. So Phoebe's, we're not sure of her age. She's probably two to three years old. Uh, she was found as a stray uh, from the looks of her at that time. And that I think was maybe last spring or summer. Uh, it looked like she'd had puppies, but nobody found any puppies. I think whoever found her like looked around, like are there puppies nearby in the woods or whatever. Uh, nobody found any puppies, so you know we don't know we don't know what happened to Phoebe that made her out, you know be out on the street by herself. And uh, so we took her in. Now she's spayed and up to date on shots. And uh, <laughs> she heard me saying she her was name. never reported missing by no, any no, no, and yeah, we keep anything. them, you know, or wherever. I don't know where she. She might have been in another shelter before our shelter. Maybe I'm thinking Dunkirk or somebody down there might have had her, and uh, you know, nobody came looking for her, so oh. she ended up with us. But hmm. uh, she is a real, you know, she walks pretty nice on a leash. You want a treat? She'll sit for a treat. <laughs> you want that? She's not one of these dogs that will chew, uh, bite your fingers trying to take the No, treat, right? she's very gentle. Um, she doesn't seem to be food aggressive. You can go in, you know, you can take the ball out of her mouth. Um, I don't know if she would do, she did play with another dog at the shelter for a while, but then they got into a little tiff. So we don't pair her up with anybody anymore. Oh, you know, I see. So I don't so know if, you know, it would depend on the dog. It's best that she's the only pet in the house, then, um, would you say? I w yeah, I think so. I think she would go after, uh, like a cat. She would go after cats and little, you know, squirrels if in your yard, which, mm -hmm. you know, they usually get away. I mean, mm -hmm. we have squirrels all over, and my mm -hmm. dogs, they can't catch them. Mm -hmm. So, but they'll try. So, uh, and she will destroy stuffed toys, but she likes her, her hard, she's got a Kong that she really likes, and she likes uh, hard chew toys, like Nyla bones and stuff like that. And she really likes Patty. And she <laughs> likes to play ball. She'll play ball. Okay. And, uh, you can toss it to her? Can she catch it? Uh, you know, I've only just thrown it, and she chases it, and then she'll oh, bring I it see. back. And uh, mm -hmm. she, she can be real active, and she can be a couch potato. And she rode great in the car. Oh, you know, she okay. sat in the was back this the seat. first time that you've had her in the car? The first time I've had her in the car. Other people have taken okay. her. To, uh, we had one uh, volunteer, um, and this is you know a volunteer type type of thing. Some people don't have like two to three hours a week, specifically one day a week. Uh, I had this woman. She's a nurse, and she works crazy shifts, like so many on and so many off. And she said, you know, can I just come down and take a dog for the day? She goes, I like to hike, but, you know, I thought maybe she's th like, maybe it's not safe to go hiking by myself, but if I had a dog with me, you know. So she came one day and took Phoebe for the whole day, and they went to Presque Isle. And oh, did they? Went mm -hmm. out for ice cream, you know, had a mm -hmm. nice time. <laughs> they went for ice cream? No, I don't know. You know, she, <laughs> the lady said, this is what I like to do, you know. She goes, I like to go for a walk and then get something to eat. And I go, now Phoebe would be all over that. So <laughs> Phoebe had a good time that day. So, yeah, so that's another thing about volunteering. If, if you don't have, you know, if you're busy and you just want to stop in once in a while and take a dog for a run or for a walk or 
spend some time with a dog. I mean, we have volunteers that do that too. So mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, a lot of people will, like me, we commit to serve, but I'm retired. So I can say I will be there on these days mm -hmm. and these times. Mm -hmm. And that's important too. But you know, it, it's some people come once a week for a couple of hours and that's great. So uh, if anybody wants to volunteer, uh, we're always looking for volunteers. It takes about, uh, we do about a 45 minute to an hour, a uh, little safety training and safety protocols and handling the dogs. And on each one of their uh, kennels, there's a, a sheet that talks about them and you know what you, today I'm walking a dog, he's a new guy, his name's Rowdy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was there last night and then this morning and I took him for a walk. Well, he's an owner turnover and they go, oh, he, he walks on a leash. Well, he also chases cars. Oh, God. <laughs> and he's about he didn't write that. <laughs> no, they didn't write that he chases cars. It's going to be on there now. <laughs> because, you know, if you're walking him and, and he's a big dog, he probably weighs 90 pounds. Oh, my God. He could lose some weight, but, um, you know, he was well taken care of. He, I think maybe it was older people and they just couldn't handle him anymore. Oh, but he oh, was, yeah, well, yeah. he's a real friendly dog. So if anybody wants a big a big, uh, very nice um, shepherd mix. He's mm -hmm. real pretty. We're, his picture's probably gonna pop up oh, here. Oh, sure. And his name is Rowdy, but yeah. So anyway, volunteers come in, you look at, you read the kennel sheet, and you know, especially if you, it's a new dog and you're not familiar with it. Um, and then it'll give you like that kind of information. Like just, you know, stay away from cars. <laughs> <laughs> and we do. Go, do, go take them for walks on the back 40 on well, your property, and the not problem, on the road. The problem with Rowdy is it did say <laughs> on his paper that he would chase chipmunks, squirrels. Is uh, that Rowdy? That's Rowdy. He will chase chipmunks, squirrels, bunnies, whatever. So I, at first I was like, well, I could, you know, after the car chasing nonsense, I thought, well, I'll try to take him. We have extra property. And I thought I'll walk over there. And I was just keeping an eye out because that's, you know, there's a lot of rabbits over there. And I he, saw a rabbit. He didn't see the rabbit. So we left and went back to the road to chase the cars. Um, so. Rowdy does look pretty pudgy. Yeah, he's a, he could definitely lose some weight. Um, you haven't had him there long. Though. He's He just got there like uh -huh. last yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, I got to take him, take him for a walk yesterday and this morning. Mm -hmm. But it was... Uh, I had to hang on, <laughs> especially, <laughs> and and he's the kind of dog that's like, he's like, you know, and it's, North, or, uh, yeah, North Gale is, you know, we don't get a lot of traffic, but he's one of those that is w waiting, like listening, and you know, they have great hearing, so he can hear a car coming from, you know, a couple hundred yards down the road, so he's already on high alert when I didn't even know there was a car, so mm -hmm. I see him going like, oh, where is it? Yeah, they can, they can hear. They even recognize um, the sound of the car that belongs to the pers people they live with. Right. You know, right. I, I, I mean, we, all of our pets always knew, you know. When you're home. When. Compared to when we, UPS shows up. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> yeah. exactly, yeah. Yeah. So, um, of course, there's not a lot of traffic because we live out on a country road, so there's not as much traffic to have to distinguish our mm -hmm. car from other cars. Now, uh, the viewing audience has probably noticed that you're wearing a shirt that says Northern Chautauqua Canine Rescue mm -hmm. on it. Uh, is it possible for uh, people that don't work there to get shirts? That yes say Northern Chautauqua yes. Canine Rescue on them? Our, we are open every afternoon, Monday through Saturday, not Sunday, Monday through Saturday from one to three. Um, you can stop in and if you wanna see the dogs or we have a little gift shop area where we have shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, hats, and then we have like some, I think we have some jewelry in there that somebody made for us. Um, and we have some dog sweaters and collars and leashes oh, and for stuff the dogs like that. to wear. Yeah, we have stuff for dogs, we have stuff for people. So yeah, one to three every afternoon. Now one thing I'm wondering about with the, your gift shop, um, certain breeds of smaller dogs uh, can get a collapsed trachea mm -hmm. if they uh, wear a collar that's just around their neck. So um, 
I guess uh, you're supposed to uh, use a har more of a harness mm -hmm. type of thing with them. Do you have uh, harnesses yes, to sell? Yes, we do. You yeah, do have do. harnesses. And, you know, if someone adopts a dog from us, and, I mean, when they come in, we get people that donate harnesses, leashes, collars. We have bins full of that stuff. So oh, okay. If there's a dog that needs a special kind of thing, it's usually will go home with that on. So you don't have to spend a lot of money. Although people, you know, they want to get their dog new stuff, so they do. But it's not, you know, when they leave, you need a leash. We don't usually, you know, we don't hand out leashes, but they'll go home with a collar or a harness on, mm -hmm. maybe both. Mm -hmm. So if um, you've got some to spare, yeah, uh, we and. I'm, honestly, we always do. There's, like I said, there's bins full of them. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and people are always donating. So, but then we do have new. We do have some new stuff for sale too. And and some of that we put out at the yard sale as well. We usually have a table just for uh, crates and uh, beds and you know all kinds of water. You know those those big water things, the reservoir type water thing. Uh, we always have a lot of that stuff, so if you're thinking about getting a dog or you need a new crate for somebody you already have, we always have really good bargains. On, oh, okay. You know, you buy one of those, you'll pay 50, 60 bucks, and we usually have them for 10 or 20 dollars at our sale, and they're in excellent condition. Uh, is this at your yard sale? At the yard that sale, you yeah. usually have them? Yeah, because people do, okay. they donate stuff like, you know, a lot of people, especially, you know, when we're for also for the yard sale, we don't start taking donations. I think this year we're going to change it up a little bit. It'll be like maybe the, not the first week of July, which is like 4th of July week. It'll be after that. And oh, we're okay. Do it for uh, like later a, than. Yeah. Than we used the, to do it July 1st. Yeah. But, um, okay. We found that, you know, we don't get a lot in the beginning and in the middle two weeks is when we really get the stuff. So we're just going to do those middle two weeks and then have like a week to get ready, the sale to just to get, get everything so the second out. and third weeks yeah. of um july and, and you do not take books, books. mattresses <laughs> right. clothing right <laughs> um i know we took some boots last year i mean if they're like work like barn boots or something that are oh. in really good shape like oh okay you know like they can go over with the tools and stuff like that but yeah no electronics like computers or um, TVs, uh, things like that. But we do take like kitchen appliances, uh, all kinds of kitchenware, toasters, mixers, blenders, coffee pots, um, toaster ovens. What else would there be? Air fryers now probably because that's a new thing. Although sometimes they start fires, I hear. <laughs> so I don't it, know. It, that doesn't sound like anything I would want, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, all kinds of, you know, um, tools we take, sporting goods. Um, I'm trying to think, kids kids games. And, and uh, last year we had a lot of uh, little jigsaw puzzles. And those, you know, we saw- Did they go good? Well? Yeah, they do. People will, you know, people get, People do those things in the winter time, right? Right. And uh, yeah. you know, if you can buy one for a dollar, that's pretty good. You've got oh yeah, you've got a week's worth of entertainment for a buck. So right, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to say now, um, I kind of wanted to bring up the subject of veterinary care. Um, you know, I'm thinking that the cost of veterinary care these days is um, pretty high. It's mm -hmm. just about like a person going to the doctor. And uh, especially if uh, something, uh, the animal needs surgery mm -hmm. or some sort of intensive treatment or something. And um, I'm and some people might be discouraged from adopting an animal uh, because of that. Um, and you have several pets at your home, I know. <laughs> yes, we do. You and your husband are big animal lovers. And uh, do you, so I wanted to ask you, do you have health insurance for your pets? We do not. But that um, is something, you know, because we, so far, we have five dogs, a cat, and a rabbit, and so far, the veterinary care has, you know, we can afford it, mm -hmm. so it's not a problem for us. Mm -hmm. I can see where, you know, depending on your income, 
that it could be, but you know, don't get five. You know, have <laughs> have one. Um, yeah. I've seen the pet insurance, but I really don't know anything about it. And, how and it works you and don't know if it's. That's what I'm wondering: if, is if yeah, it's is as, it as, it? as, as expensive as just paying for? You know, that would probably be a good question to ask your veterinarian. Yeah. You know, because they're the ones who are going to be, mm -hmm. you know, submitting for the insurance, just like when you go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. They don't, you know, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about that. They send it in, and then mm -hmm. if you owe, they send you the bill. So maybe the vet, your vet, would know more about that probably yeah I, I'm not sure I just I'm assuming that pet insurance could be expensive too yeah, I don't I really don't and know. I, I don't I don't know if um, it, it would know, be very just, helpful or not so I just I just wanted to see if you knew anything about I it don't but it's probably worth looking into but yeah so I don't know if you know if I had to pay so much per month for each one you know, is that worth it in the long run? Um, and, you know, we really, like I said, well, Steve doesn't know. <laughs> I don't tell him everything, you know. Oh, well, he doesn't then, know. <laughs> well, then, like, like the do just like the dog food, and uh, <laughs> I buy the glucosamine things for a couple of the older ones to, oh, you know, oh, for oh, their joints know. and supplements and you know, I buy them the premium food and stuff like that, and, and uh, I buy a lot of stuff down at uh, the tractor supply, and they're really generous. Oh, they're always collecting for oh, us yeah, in that's, Westfield. Yeah, that's over. That there is a tractor supply in Westfield yeah. now, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. You know, I get. I've always gotten um, dental treats for my cats, mm -hmm. and they they seem to really uh, help a lot. You know, with uh, yeah, I have a cat that's addicted to those. <laughs> they they get that way, don't they? Yes. They will go. I mean, I have a you know a certain cabinet at home that I keep them in, and I cannot open that cabinet up to get anything else out mm -hmm. without the cat showing up. You know. <laughs> well, we had to put them in the refrigerator because the cat could open the cabinet that they were in. Then he would knock them out of there then the dogs would get them, destroy the container they're in, and eat all the treats. And they're not cheap. No. no. And I would buy the big one, you know, like a mm -hmm. great big plastic square thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, With that many animals, you have to. So now yeah. we keep those in the fridge. Hmm. And yesterday, I'm walking into the kitchen, and I went near the fridge. The cat was at my heels, and I was wearing shorts, and I didn't get him a treat. And he gave me a little bite in the, in the ankle. Oh, the cat did yeah. that. Yeah. Like, you know, hey. Get that, get those treats out. Not hard. Didn't break the skin, but he let me know. Yeah, there was one cat that we had that you know how some cats give love bites. Yeah, that's and um, this one cat we had, and he's the one that shows up in the picture on the opening for this okay. program. That long-haired, silver-colored cat. And he would give the dogs that we had love bites. Oh, he bite them bite their legs. Yeah. You should have seen the, the one dog there the first time that he gave the dog a love bite. The, you should have seen, I mean, the dog twirled around really fast uh -huh. and had this confused look on its face like, did yeah. I just get attacked? Yeah, you know? what's happening? <laughs> okay, um, I think we've probably reached the point in the program where we could uh, bring up the pictures of the other dogs that are living at the shelter presently. Okay. Let's see. This one is named Blue. Blue. He's adorable. Is uh, he some sort of a hound dog? Some sort of a hound dog, yes. Uh, he was an owner turnover. His backstory is somebody was moving, uh, kind of dumped the dog on another one of his friends, and but the friend, very nice guy, had a senior dog that was, you know, bigger, mm -hmm. but then he had a little corgi too, mm -hmm. and he said the corgi's just crabby, you know, and mm -hmm. didn't like Blue. And then Blue was just too active and bouncy and was, you know, not, he wasn't paying attention to um, the boundaries for the older dog. Oh. So oh, yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't working out, and the guy said, you know, it's like I work and then I come home and he's like, I have to put this dog over here and then let this one over here. Mm -hmm. And he, it's, 
you know, he thought it would just be better if Blue could go to, uh, you know, another house where maybe he could have a dog friend that's, you know, more compatible with him because he does like other Closer dogs. Closer to his own yeah. age. Closer yeah. to his own age. And, and he's a really sweet dog. He just got neutered the other day. He's really handsome, very friendly. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and it's his coat color is where the name blue comes I think from. so, yeah. It's, it's kind, of kind of a blue-gray Yeah, color. he's kind of a blue-gray. He's really pretty. You can't see his whole picture, but yeah, he's a nice boy. We've already talked about Miss Phoebe here. Yeah, we have talked about her. Um, we are having... Oh, there, there. we go. There's <laughs> little Snowball. Snowball. Is that, a, is that a small dog then? She is small. Um, it says, yeah, see, there's someone holding her. <laughs> and that's how I have to carry her to take her outside. She's very timid. She came from a puppy mill. She was a, you know, a mama, puppy mill uh -huh. mama. And, you know, they, okay, after a couple of litters, they, they just get rid of them. Um, and so a lot of the puppy mill people, I mean, once in a while we get a dog, I think, I think the, the golden doodle, and somebody treated her okay, so she's not afraid of people. This one is really afraid. Oh, the poor but thing. But she's already made, it's already leaps and bounds, just getting her out of the puppy mill situation and into the shelter where you have people caring about her. And she's got other dogs. She likes other dogs a lot, you know. So mm -hmm. when she's out running around and the other dogs are out running around, they're coming up and she's happy and waggy. And, and this morning when we went out to get her out of her kennel and bring her back inside for breakfast, um, she was actually kind of like bouncing around and playing when the uh, volunteer went in to get her. Oh. But, the, but then she laid down on the ground and she kind of, she put a lead on her and she walked part way in, but, you know, carried her and <laughs> put her back in her, in her place. Uh, this is the Golden Doodle, Bonnie, mm -hmm. and Bonnie does have a meet and greet because everybody wants a Golden Doodle, and they are wonderful dogs, but obviously she needs some grooming. Is she one of those really big Golden yeah, Doodles? Yeah, she's pretty big. She's, she's probably about, well, it's hard to say because she, she's so fluffy. Um, she's going to look a lot different once she gets uh, groomed, which I would take her right to the groomer. Um, she's probably about 65 pounds, maybe. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's only a couple years old, I think. And yeah, another, I think she was a puppy mill dog I, too. Some people that I know uh, had a couple of uh, Labradoodles uh, one time when they were first like kind of a new thing, uh -huh. you know. And those okay. dogs, okay. they looked like the f they they looked like they were the full size of a Labrador Retriever when yeah. they were only three months old. Yeah. Well, they got to be huge, like a wolf, like a wolfhound. Wow! You know, uh, they got to be huge. And one time, when I stopped by to visit them, one time, I, I couldn't get out of the car because uh, they kept. I, I went to get out of the car. They jump up on me and knock me back into the oh, car geez. because they were so big. You know, uh -huh. <laughs> they were they okay. were so huge when they were full grown. <laughs> Want to so, come up? Let's see, Wilson. Oh, he got adopted <laughs> oh, <laughs> yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah, I think it was yesterday. So, so Wilson, he's, he's still on the website. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, it, it doesn't change immediately. You know, a lot of times they leave him on the website just to make sure, like, because sometimes if they somebody go. Somebody like, don't doesn't bring them back. The, they're, they're, you'll see in a few minutes. There's a couple that uh, Morgan and Vinton, and uh, they went home to the same home together because they're. They're kind of a bonded pair. Pair, so somebody did adopt them both. They had them about six days and brought them the, back. The wife wasn't totally on board with it, so they brought them back. So we usually give it a few days before we take them off the website. Now here's a little tiny person, Mabel. This one I've never met. Uh, so Mabel's in foster care. Um, so I really don't know anything about Mabel. You'd have to read on the website about Mabel and. Uh, I wanted to say but something she, about she looks Mabel. Cute. Yeah. That is the first name of that was the first name of one of my husband's grandmothers. Okay. On it, the one on his mother's side of the family. It uh -huh. was Mabel. And she's she's a small dog. Yeah. She's a full grown dog, yeah. just really small. Yep. 
um, I don't know. Do you think there's some um, fox terrier or something? She maybe? looks like, yeah. She looks like yeah. a... Yeah. I remember we had a fox terrier when I was a little girl back mm -hmm. in the 1950s. That was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And this is... Oh, this is a, a puppy. We had... A, okay, Fallon? so some dog had 17 puppies. In one litter? In one year. We didn't have the female dog. We didn't have the mom dog. But uh, it, was in a, it was in a shelter, I think. But they had 17 puppies. Obviously, you know, one, dog, one mom dog can't take care of 17 puppies. So that's when she was littler. <laughs> and wait a so minute. So when the puppies um, got older, um, yeah, that's her baby picture. When the puppies got older, they, about eight weeks old, they were split up amongst like three different shelters. Oh. So we had six of them. Oh my God. And we still have this one left. And she's in foster care now because of all of her little friends got adopted. And now she's probably four months old. Mm -hmm. She's a, and the nice thing about these puppies, um, because they were so many, I mean, volunteers, not at our shelter, but wherever they were when they were tiny puppies. So these dogs were handled by humans and fed by humans or supplemented, supplementally oh, oh, okay. fed by humans, okay. like from right from the get go. So these dogs are super sweet mm -hmm. and, you know, really cuddly. Oh, okay. <laughs> they like to sit in your, they're are, probably going to be big though. Are, are they like part Labrador retriever, do you I think? Th I don't know, I can't remember what, it, they were big, there was two big breeds. And they were the two pretty, big breeds. Yeah, uh -huh. I, I don't remember exactly, but they're going to be. I, I mean, the, this dogs. was this was one litter. This yeah, one litter, seventeen Holy puppies. Holy cow! Yeah. I'm trying to. Maybe it was a Great Pyrenees mixed with a some other big breed. So a yeah. lot of puppies. Oh, you're going to chew the leash? Um, Chris just uh, read something there. The website says Golden Retriever, Pyrenees, and Purebred Malinois. Okay. Malinois. Malinois. Okay. Golden Retriever, and Great White Pyrenees. Yeah, so all They're all bigger, big dogs. Yeah. yeah they, bigger, those are all big dogs. But like I said, very sweet. So if anybody wants a four-month-old puppy. Okay, this is one of the... You may have read this in the news. This is Vinton, and he's got probably his sister or aunt or somebody, Morgan. He's got a blue eye and a brown eye, and the other one, Morgan, has two blue eyes. They're adorable. Isn't, isn't so he So there cute? must be some husky in them? Uh, or not? Probably, yeah, with the blue eyes or, uh, you although, know, one of those. Although one time I... Uh, I think Australian I shepherds, saw, too. One, one summer, I, a few years back, I did see some people that had a blue-eyed dog with them, and they said, I said, does that ha dog have some husky in it? And they said, no, it's uh, one of those Australian... Australian shepherd shepherds. Yeah, yeah. have blue eyes, too. Was what it, what it turned out it was. Well, so Morgan and Vinton, it, it was in the news... There was some guy in Ohio that had like 60 dogs on his property in all terrible condition. There were dead dogs all over the place, oh, other gosh. dead animals. He got arrested. I don't know what the follow-up on the case was. So, you know, somebody had to go in and get the live dogs that were left. And so when we got these guys, they had already been in another shelter, you know, being brought back to life. Um, but yep. when we got them, they were still pretty thin. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there she this is now. This one's Morgan. Morgan. Yeah, yeah isn't you she know, beautiful? She looks like she could have some. Um, oh, what am I trying to say? Um, is she quite a large dog? Um, probably 55, 60 pounds. Because she looks sort of like. Um, yeah, so, you, um, know, we, you know, the name the, the name of that breed of dog I'm trying to think of is not popping Well, maybe it'll pop in your head. Moment. Yeah, it looks like, uh, oh, fooey. Never mind. Well, I don't I, think, we, and I don't think we got a lot of information from the guy that's in jail now, so, <laughs> and I hope he's still in jail. So. Oh, oh, seriously, it sounds like a hoarding situation, yeah. doesn't it? Well, yeah. And I, yeah, there were other animals, too, that were, you know, 
I don't remember, chickens and geese and maybe a pig, I don't know, just terrible situation. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah. Well, and probably some mental illness going on there. Probably. Know. So, oh, here's my, t my two favorites. My favorite one, Prince, the tan guy. He's been there for two years. Oh my gosh. Poor Prince. Uh, You've had him for two years. Yep, it'll be two years this summer. Um, he came from kind of an abusive situation where there may have been some drug activity in the home. Oh, God. Uh, when we first got him, he couldn't even touch his collar. He would freak out. Uh, I think they used to grab him and smack him. Um, oh. He wouldn't walk on a leash, but now he walks on a leash. Mm -hmm. He plays ball with me. Mm -hmm. And he is kind of like, uh, you know, the kennel, indoor kennels aren't that big. So if you went in there and tried to pick up his dish, after he ate, he would, you know, come mm -hmm. after you. Mm -hmm. And that scared a lot of people. So mm -hmm. they put him over on the other side where there's a guillotine door so they can just open it. They don't have to handle him because some oh, people okay. are. But he's, he really, he's not scary at all. Um, it's just like the food thing. But a lot of dogs have that. I mean, my own dogs would. If I threw something down in the floor in the middle of them, they'd kill each other for a piece of turkey or something. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you just have to be able to manage that. Like if you, and he does play, that's Lucy. The, the <laughs> Lucy's black Lucy's the dog. black one. Now, and the thing about Lucy is um, she can climb over a six foot fence. Oh. So you don't need a fenced yard for Lucy. You just need to be dedicated to taking her on regular walks. Oh. And she's, <laughs> but she loves playing with Prince. I mean, they just love each other. They, and they all thought that Prince would, you know, be aggressive with another dog because he doesn't like to share. Mm -hmm. However, he doesn't mind sharing his toys. They'll play with a rope toy. They chase each other around for a ball. There's absolutely no aggression between the two of them, and they just have a ball playing with each other. Yeah. So they're both They're there. both a couple of really nice looking dogs. Very active, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they, you know, like all shelter dogs, they're, some of them will walk in, unpack, and act like they've always lived at your house, and others could take you know, two or three months to really feel comfortable with you yeah. and learn the routine. So just, you know, you have to be patient. This guy, Bruno. Bruno. Well, handsome. see, I've been seeing his picture in the newspaper. Him and Phoebe. Yeah. It seems like I've been seeing those two quite a bit in the newspaper. They're getting famous. A very handsome shepherd. He's playful. Um, Initially, when I went there, he's got a great, but he's got the VID room all to himself, and he's got his own patio, and he, he goes <laughs> for walks. Uh, he's a big, a big dog. Um, initially, when I went, I don't know what it was, whether, who knows what he, some of these dogs go mm -hmm. through, but when I went to open his gate, he was rawr, right at the gate, like, rawr, 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 aggressive. I thought, ooh, okay, I'm not going to. Am I seeing... Um, is it he in a foster home? No, 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 no. That's our VID room. So he's in a oh, big okay. room. It's got okay. a, you know, it's okay. probably 10 by 10. Uh -huh. And then he has an outdoor area, too, that he can go out to. But so the trick the learned with him, and now he's okay with it. But I just take a top. He likes to play tug. So mm -hmm. I put it. the thing that was freaking him out was my hand on his gate. So I put a towel over my hand mm -hmm. and... You want to play, Bruno? You want to play? And then I open the gate with a towel, mm -hmm. and then I stick the towel in there, and he grabs a towel from me, and we're playing tug of war. Oh, okay. And then he'll just go right outside, and so we're friends now. Oh, but good. At first, I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like me very much. <laughs> and, there's and there's one Mac. that's part Dalmatian. Part Dalmatian. Obviously. Big, strong dog. You got to be strong if you're going to take this guy home. He could probably use some some training, you know, some leash training. Um, but we have trainers, you know, on call. Uh, you know, you can, we have a, a late, actually she's in Mayville, Carly Davis, Chautauqua Dogs. She does dog training. She does classes uh, on Sundays down at our shelter in the Learning Center. Oh, does she? And I think, I'm not sure you'd have to talk to her, but it's like so many weeks and then they have a graduation and she does a puppy class. She does like older dog class. She'll do a one-on-one. -on -one. She has a place down here on Route 430. She got a, her own little setup where uh, I took Prince there for a while for, mm -hmm. you know, initially mm -hmm. to help us with him. And it helped a lot. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
anyway, so there's there are trainers around and can teach you how if you don't know or if you didn't want to read dog training for dummies or something. That, <laughs> <laughs> or you could do you could yeah. go that route too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he's Max a nice dog. He likes to play ball and uh, he's very handsome. He came from uh, the guy who was going to be homeless. Had a cat and a dog and and so he you know wanted us to take the dog. Ideally, if the guy would have been able to get a home, he could have got the dog back, but we haven't heard so. Oh, um, now do you know, uh, was this a Westfield area person that was going I'm to be I'm really home? not sure. Because I'm just wondering if, uh, um, I w I'm just wondering if there aren't um, any uh, organizations around that can help people. Right, I don't Like know. that. Um, we did a program uh, with um, a nephew of mine and his girlfriend and uh, a few weeks back. Uh, that one just got through airing. Um, and the girlfriend, uh, she is graduating from law school in May and taking the bar exam in July and the type of law she's going into. Unfortunately, they live in Florida, so that's not going to help people around here. <laughs> But anyway, she uh, uh, is going into a type of law where they help people that are at risk of being evicted. And apparently, um, I didn't realize how bad the situation was, but um, I I'll have to loan you the book. So you, she mm -hmm. gave me a book that I could read about a whole bunch of different situations. So, um, so that was kind of interesting. This is somebody named Izzy. Okay, Izzy. She's in foster care right here in Mayville. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, she came from, we've had her for a couple years too. Really? She, yeah, she came from some guy in, I think, Kentucky or somewhere, oh. uh, West Virginia, I don't know. And it was her and three of her adult children and some puppies, the newer puppies, and uh, the dad of the puppies. So the dad got adopted, the puppies, the little puppies got adopted. Uh, two, we still have two of her adult children at the shelter. Uh -huh. um, the girl dog, uh, what was her name now? Now I can't, now I'm having that, you know, <laughs> what's the name? Anyway, she got adopted. So there's still Izzy's in foster care, and her two sons are at the shelter, Jeb and Justice, and they're they're very timid with people, you know, and they were just, you know, they're just a mess when we got them, you know, they came from some guy that thought he had a little backyard rescue, but he wasn't socializing them at oh. all. So it's taken them really, really, they're almost like semi-feral. Yeah. You know? But yeah. you know, I go in the shelter and they're in a, uh, they're in a heap, really big kennel together. I just open the door and go, "Come on, boys, let's go out." And they just, I leave the doors open. They just run right out to the outside to the yard to play. And they, you know, when I want them to come back in, I just go out there. Come on, boys, let's go back in. And you know, we have volunteers that I, it, I never have the time when I'm there because I'm cleaning and feeding and then walking. But uh, people do come in and just sit in there with them and pet them and you know try to just get them to calm down. There was another Izzy uh, back when I first started um, having people come on. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, there was an Izzy back then. There was w two dogs that they wanted to have adopted together Okay. Uh, because they were bonded and uh, one was there was a, it, one was a German Shepherd called Bear and mm -hmm. the other one was some sort of a big black dog, hmm. fluffy black dog named Izzy that I remember was over there. Um, but uh, Ann Mulk wound up telling me that uh, both of them had been adopted um, by this, uh, um, this one family and they adopted a puppy that just happened to be at the shelter oh, too. Oh, wow, great. And Bear, the German Shepherd, was so good at c caring for Aww. the puppy that they came back and adopted another puppy. So, All right. Uh, the um, the shelter <laughs> unloaded four dogs wow. with that one family. But, Gee. Uh, so uh, that was pretty interesting. 
Boy, she's right there at attention, isn't she? Yeah, she finally woke up. Are there any more pictures of dogs? Um, that was all of them, okay. Okay, so we've been through all of the pictures. Um, you don't know if any of uh, the dogs that you have there now, you probably don't know if any of them are okay with cats. Probably not. Mm, I don't know. Mm. You can always, well, <laughs> Marsha one time said, I shouldn't even say this. He said, well, you know, it can only, it can only kill the cat once. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Now that's mean. I would never, you know, I have a cat and mm -hmm. the cat that we have, he w will put any dog in its place, mm -hmm. you know, because I mean, when, when I had the cat, I had two different dogs. I mean, he's seven, this cat's like 17 years old now or 16 or 17 and, uh, but he still looks great. So mm -hmm. I think he's going to live forever. I think he's reincarnated. <laughs> he was, he was some evil person when he was a person and they sent him back as a cat and uh but he like dog whenever i bring a new dog home which now it's like dog number five i mean dogs will run up to him and he's just like you know and that's the end of that and he just gets along he wrestles with the dogs he mm -hmm. you know he's right in there with them he doesn't care mm -hmm. so if well he, we've always had both dogs and cats and they've always gotten along mm -hmm together yeah good so well, we had two other cats and since you know a couple years ago they they were old and they were you know uh, barn cats when they started out so probably not the like we're you know they could be inbred and genetic problems yeah. and they only made it to like 14 or 15 I think mm -hmm. when they passed away and one of them had kidney failure and the other one had cancer um, they were brother and sister, mm -hmm. and we lost them both like within six months. Oh, and okay. but they they were more timid with the dogs, but mm -hmm. they had their own room with a gate, so they could come out, but the dogs couldn't go in. Oh, so okay. they had their safe space, so okay. it it worked out. So they would you know they they would mostly sneak around at night when the dogs were in their kennels. Oh, okay, so. okay, yeah, that's good. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is. Um, we visited a cousin of my, I know this isn't about dogs. That's okay. You, I had you tell a story about a bird one oh, time. Yeah. And this is kind of interesting. We visited a cousin of my husband's uh, recently and he and his wife have acquired an African gray parrot. Mm. Nice. Th those are really smart birds. Yeah. Not only can they learn how to talk, but they know what they're saying means I've heard, uh -huh. you know, so uh, it's it's a really pretty pair, uh, you know, it's kind of that blue-gray color mm -hmm. that some animals have. And Steve's sister had a, she probably still has it, I, but she lives down in Florida, so I haven't mm -hmm. been down there lately, but she has a parrot, or had a parrot, um, they live a long time, so she probably still has this parrot, but it would, <laughs> it would make a noise like the phone ringing, like in the old <laughs> days when you had a phone that actually rang. Mm -hmm. It would make that noise, because at first I was at her house and this parrot, and I hear the phone, what I think is the phone ringing. Mm -hmm. It's the parrot making the noise of a phone ringing, and then it goes, hello? <laughs> <laughs> in the parrot voice, hello? <laughs> you know, and it would say, you know, it, it would want food it would say I want a cracker or whatever like whatever she taught it to say and it knew that it wanted a cracker and it was going to get a cracker mm. but she used to let it fly around you had to be careful because if you had like jewelry uh -oh. it would come up and drive peck or if you're wearing sandals it come and peck at your toes oh. so I was a little leery when <laughs> yeah when the bird was flying around in the house yeah. <laughs> But yeah, they are really smart. Yeah, yeah. And they I've live heard, forever, so don't, yeah, you know, I've don't, heard, it's a long commitment. I've heard uh, something like they can be 100 years old or yeah, something they, like yeah, that. Yeah, you gotta leave, really if you're gonna have one, leave it in your will to somebody, because <laughs> somebody that wants a parrot. <laughs> because, uh, because it'll probably outlive yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, one other thing I meant to um, ask about is not only uh, do you have a big yard sale every year, but uh, 
uh, you can accept donations, um, not just of money, but uh, oh, yeah, stuff. Of, of stuff. Stuff, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Um, like I was saying at the yard sale, we get a lot of people that they had a dog or, you know, initially they used a crate and then, you know, now the dog's sleeping in bed with them so they don't need the crate anymore. <laughs> it's in their way. They're cleaning the garage. So we get a lot of crates. Uh, so stuff like that that's like used stuff can come to the yard sale. Um, if you're just feeling super generous, you can look at our website. Um, w you know, we always need paper towels, bleach, uh, that bleach spray. We wipe their beds down with that every day before we put a blanket back mm -hmm. on it. We use those Coranda beds. And uh, we need like canned food. It's got to be like, you know, a good quality canned food. Um, but even if it isn't great, you know, if you have some leftover or something or you bought some and your dog didn't like it, I mean, we can take it because we just mix a little bit of in with their kibble. And uh, what else? Paper towels, bleach, um, dog treats. Um, they like milk bones. They like all those little, just basically about any kind of dog treat or Nyla bones or mm -hmm. Kongs. Mm -hmm. um, even stuffed toys like not everybody is like her, you know, she will rip a stuffed toy apart in mm -hmm. two seconds. But yeah. a lot of dogs, we've had some dogs like especially like a, a retired mom dog. Mm -hmm. They like to have like a few stuffed animals and they'll kind of uh, make a little nest around them. Like take like, it like, like, they're, they're, like puppies. they're their own puppies. Yeah, like they're the yeah. puppies. Um, so um, what, what do you think of those uh, things that they sell at pet stores, the ones that actually uh, make noises that sound like um, the kind of animal. The oh, the little it, ball that rolls around. That we have a we have a couple of little things. That are, it's like a ball, and you roll it around. And it's like making this weird little like chirping noise. And we've had some dogs that really like those, and they're so big that they can't really bite it. You oh, know? oh, so they can't destroy it. Uh huh. But they're kind of freaky because it's like. It sounds like a gerbil or something, oh. like when it's rolling around on the floor. Well, I meant um, these kind of stuffed animals that when you squeeze them, they make an a, a an, squeak, an animal noise. No, no. You know. I mean, it, there's a lot I, of those ones with we, the squeakers. And I, I got, we got one for uh, one dog we had one time, and it was um, uh, the dog, the toy dog, when you'd squeeze it, it would make like karate sounds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she wants to go with you. And there was, um, there was, um, you let's see. Stay here. Oh, I know what it was. I think somebody uh, gave it to us. Oh. It was kind of a, a toy that if you squeezed it, it would, it was a Christmas thing. You oh. know, it would go like ho, ho, ho. Oh. And, the dog we had at that time would run around trying to find the, oh, like yeah. the person that was going ho, 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 and like that. So um, She's worried. She wants him to come back. Uh-oh, he left the room. He left. Uh -oh. oh, no. Now what? What's the matter, Phoebes? It's okay. Come here, pay attention to me. Look what I got, treats. Let's focus over here. Let's focus on treats. Geez, it hurt her feelings that he left the I know, room. right? <laughs> no, you don't want this? I wasn't expecting that, especially since she only just met him for the first time. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> She's already attached. <laughs> Phoebe, <laughs> Phoebe, don't cry. He'll, he's going to come back. He's going to come back. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, all right. That's it. He's going to have to move to a place where he can have pets. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he can't have one right now because of where he lives, but uh, yeah, he will have to find a new place. Yeah. <laughs> right. Take <laughs> Mac home or Phoebe or Bruno. Yeah, we have, uh, there's been a few times, we have a lot of chipmunks. Well, our neighbors have chickens, and so then, you know, there's extra feed laying around in the chicken. So um, th th we have a plethora of Chipmunks. Is this in your neighborhood? In our neighborhood. Where you live, yeah, yourself, where I live. not at the No, dog not shelter. at the shelter. So a lot of chipmunks. And there have been a, okay, so they used to get into the basement somehow. So the cat would go down in the basement, catch a chipmunk, mm -hmm. bring it upstairs alive, 
and let drop it, it in the middle of the living room and let it run around. And, and it's running around and all the dogs are going nuts <laughs> and the chipmunk is like running along the edges of the room trying to get out so i'd open the back door we've never had a chipmunk no chipmunks were harmed well maybe they have a little stress now because they were chased by five dogs <laughs> but the chipmunks made it out alive uh -huh. so every once in a while just to be a jerk i'll go on my computer and bring up a chipmunk mm -hmm. in the wild and the noise i did it the other day just to see if they still would react because mm -hmm. it's been a couple years since we had a chipmunk in the house and uh it was it's hilarious they're all sleeping laying around on the furniture sleeping and the chipmunk starts chirping in the video mm -hmm. and the dogs just go crazy they're they're run like, around looking. Right up, and they run around looking. Running forward. around looking and whining and like, <laughs> where is it? We know it's here somewhere. <laughs> oh, Phoebe. you're such a practical joker, Patty. I know. Patty. I know. It was. <laughs> eh, you know, gave him a little exercise. What, what did Steve think of that? Oh, he thinks it's funny too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 sometimes uh, when we would have. Uh, Okay. A national public radio turned on in the morning. They'd have um, I, this program they call Bird Note. It's only a oh. few minutes long or something yeah. like that. And our dog, our go dog would, uh, and they would have the bird noises and everything oh, yeah. on this radio, this little short radio program. And the dog would go and get, go and look to see where around the area where the radio was, uh -huh. <laughs> looking yeah. to where's see the where bird? the where's the bird yeah, yeah. so um, so it was uh, it was pretty funny well I'm glad that you were able to come today yeah, and, me too. and bring a friend with yeah. you she needed a little outing yeah she did didn't she and, um, so anyways, uh, um, good luck with everything over there at the animal shelter. I hope some of these dogs that have been there for two years get I adopted. Know. I know. And um, anyways. Um, but, you know, we get some that they're, they're there for three minutes and they're gone. Like we had this little, mm -hmm. was, her name was Sweet Pea. She was a Boston Terrier mixed with some other terrier. So this tiny little thing so cute mm -hmm. and uh, I was trying to get a friend of mine I was texting her like you gotta see this dog mm -hmm. and uh, but the next day it was gone I mean mm -hmm. I don't even think this dog was there for three days and the golden mm -hmm. doodle you know just just like mm -hmm. that and and Wilson mm -hmm. was gone pretty quick he was and he's a big like hound dog kind of dog yeah. so you know it's just uh it's just kind of strange it's hard to it's hard to understand why some of them stay so long and then you know I mean, it's easy to understand why some of them just get right out of there, mm -hmm. you know, especially like the little, little dogs go really, really fast. Really quickly. Yeah, really yeah. fast. The big ones are more of a commitment because of the exercise, you know. Yeah. You, you know, you can put up a tiny little fence and a little dog isn't going to jump over or dig under and they're just right. going to go out and do their business right. and come back to your lap. So right. the bigger ones are, are definitely more, more of a commitment of time. Well, we've come to the end of another episode of Fresh Perspectives, and I'll see those of you in the viewing audience on the next episode. Right.